So today's physics problem involves inductance and capacitance. I put the, the, the question in the description just so I can save some room up here on the screen. So we're told that we have a capacitor, which is in series with an inductor. Inductor with negligible resistance. And we're told that our capacitor has a capacitance of 550 microfarads. And we're also told that our inductor has an inductance of 0 0.330, 0 0.330 penries. And we're also told that at some instant in time, our instantaneous current, which I'm denoting by a little i, was equal is equal to 2.50 amps or amperes, and that at the exact moment as well, our the the, the rate at ch the rate of change in which our current is going through, di dt, is 89 amps per second, and we're asked to find the maximum voltage in which the capacitor can achieve. So that's our goal right there. So the first question you should ask yourself is, where is the EMF source coming from? And the answer you should know, hopefully, is due to Faraday's law and Lenz's law, who have told us that when there is a changing magnetic flux through a surface, in this case through the cross-sectional areas of this inductor right here, the, there will be an induced EMF going the opposite way due to Lenz's law. So if we have a current going this way through the, through the inductor, we're going to have an induced EMF due to a magnetic field that's building up, and it's going to point that way. So basically what's happening is when this, when, this, when this capacitor right here starts discharging and the current is flowing this way, the changing, actually the increasing current that's building up through the coils in the wire and around it, which will be a magnetic field, is an induced, inducing a, magne, a induced EMF pointing the other way, so that when the when the when the capac when the um, current starts starts to reach a low, it'll start moving back the other way. This way. And then once once the current starts going the other way, the induced EMF will start pointing that way. And as a result, as you may guess, this will go on infinitely, assuming that there is no resistance through the through the wires. But and that was, and that's what we're that's what we were assuming because they told us there's negligible resistance through the coils of the wire. And so the way to go about this problem, the first thing you have to do is notice that this, will, this is better solved through, um, that you have, to, you have to use Faraday's law, who told us that, the induced EM, that an induced EMF is equal to the closed loop integral of E dot DL, which is equal to and we're talking about magnitude of the EMF, which is equal to the inductance times the change in the current. So that's our EMF source, essentially, the inductor right there. And so since there's only one other element in this circuit, therefore, the LDI dt must be equal to the voltage across the capacitor, which most of us which we should know as Q divided by C. And so that's the key point right there, that the, indu the induced EMF is equal to the voltage across the capacitor at any instant. Really, that should be a small Q because we're talking about instantaneous right there. And so therefore, this will serve as, a, this will serve as an important this is the first observation you should always make in any kind of inductor capacitor problem. Just okay, and so after that, after you make that very important observation, let's just put a little line through all this, you'll notice that this is an energy chain, this is an energy analysis problem where the total energy. in this entire circuit is, is, is going to be constant throughout because we're going to have an increasing electrical field um, energy coming through the capacitor 
that's going to be increasing at a moment, and then when that, while that is increasing, the, electric, the magnetic field through the inductor will be decreasing. So therefore, the total energy will always be equal. And in mathematical terms, we're basically going to write the little e of the capacitor plus the instantaneous energy of the inductor. And the little e just notes instantaneous energy. You'll probably will never see that notation in a book. I just created that right now. But and so essentially, the total energy is going to be, as you should know from reading your book and pay atten paying attention in class, that the energy across the capacitor, which we should have many, many in our disposal, is going to be equal to Q squared divided by 2C. That's just one of them. Or we can, another one would be um, 1 half CV squared. But let's just go with this one, plus the instantaneous energy across the inductor, which is going to be L little i squared divided by 2. And so what this is telling us is that this, since, since this is the total energy throughout the entire circuit, what this means is that when the capacitor has reached its maximum voltage, that means that the total energy through the inductor will be zero. So therefore, we can set this all equal to the voltage that we know, to the, um, the energy that we know is across the, um, the capacitor. And what that is, is we should know as well, is CV squared, CV max squared, because we're talking about when, the, when, the, when all of the energy is inside the capacitor's electrical field, divided by two. And so you'll notice now that we have we, what we have to do now is just solve for V max because that's what the question asks us to do, to find the maximum voltage across the capacitor. And so we have, if you'll notice, we have a little Q, we solve it here, we have our inductance, and we have the current which was given. That should be AC, and we have that as well. And so I'll go ahead and give you the numbers and show that if you plug the numbers here, L, 0 0.330 times the 89, equal to Q, which we don't know, divided by the capacitance, which was also given, you'll see that little Q, instantaneous Q, is equal to 0 0.01, 0 0.0173 coulombs. And then when you do that, you'll find, after you plug in the, the, um, the charge and you plug in the, the instantaneous current and the capacitance, and then you do some algebra, you'll get that V max should be equal to all of that Q squared divided by 2C plus LI squared divided by 2. All of this multiplied by 2 divided by the capacitance square root and You'll have to take my word for it that that all is equal to 266 volts. And that's only true when there is no energy across the inductor. So let's just, so just to recap, in case I was a little bit unclear earlier, that whenever you have an inductor, resistor, capacitor problem in a circuit, in a closed loop circuit, you always start by using a loop rule. And in this case, we used Faraday's law, who told us that Hull's loop integral of E dot DL is equal to the inductance times the change in current. And then we set that equal to the, to the element, to the only other element in this circuit. Because if you did that, minus, if you did the, um, uh, the, ener the, the EMF, the voltage across the inductor, minus the voltage across the other element, you should get zero. That's the whole idea, that the, the total voltage drop would be zero. And so in this case, we set that equal to the voltage across the capacitor, and we use that to help us get us Q, which we needed to find in our total ener energy analysis, which told us that when the energy is increasing in one element, the energy was decreasing in the other element. And so we just did a lot of algebra, and we found that the maximum voltage was 66 volts. Hopefully that makes sense.